Oh, great. So here we go. Um, thanks so much for, uh, uh, for that uh, kind introduction. Um, it's an honor to be here. Um, and many thanks to Open Forum Europe for, uh, for hosting this event. I very, very much look forward to being in person together next year. Um, for those who don't know me, for the past 18 years, I've been the executive director of the Eclipse Foundation, which last year moved its legal registration to Brussels, becoming the largest open source foundation in Europe. The mission of the Eclipse Foundation has always been twofold to foster our open source projects and communities, and to also foster the commercial ecosystem based on our projects. So for nearly two decades, I've been working on enabling the profitable commercial adoption of free software. Now there's many ways that open source can be described, but since I only have 15 minutes rather than several hours, I wanna focus in really on one topic. And my mission here with this talk is to convince you that open source is a critical element to the innovation economy, and is therefore critical to the future social and economic prosperity of Europe. At the risk of stating the obvious, most innovations in today's world are being driven by software, and most software systems increasingly rely on open source. The connection between future economic prosperity and innovation is considered by most people to be pretty obvious. In my mind, the connection between continued economic prosperity and the embrace of open source is equally obvious. I find it remarkable that in some circles, free and open source software is still perceived as either a new idea or something which exists on the periphery of mainstream economic activity. In fact, the world that we live in, which is defined by the internet um, and the World Wide Web, is entirely based on free. The invention of the internet protocols and the web protocols were both amazing technical feats. The fact that those technologies were made freely available so that they could be adopted by the entire world was a revolution that has changed every aspect of our culture, our society, and our economy. In fact, the ideas that underpin open source are in some ways quite old. Um, I'm not sure where I first read this, uh, but I love this meme uh, that open source is based on the union of the best ideas of Adam Smith and Karl Marx. The licensing model that underpins open source has created the ultimate frictionless free market of both technological ideas and their implementations. And the fact that these ideas and their implementations can be combined by anyone without seeking permission from any party has enabled an explosion in innovation. But open source has also democratized the means of production. Anyone with access to a computer can join the open source community and contribute. Today's systems are constructed from software components developed by some of the largest corporations in the world, and also by components which were developed by the proverbial loan developer in Nebraska. Um, and uh, this, so this democratization of the means of production is absolutely a key part of the whole the success and the open source of the open source movement. So just like the ideas of Adam Smith and Karl Marx, what was once radical is now mainstream because you cannot keep a good idea down. There are many different ways to describe the impact that the four freedoms that underpin the free software and open source movements have had. There are social, political, and technological interpretations that are all relevant and important. But I wanna focus on this. The freedom to study, modify, and freely distribute software is simply a better way to do business. And I'm gonna support that claim by talking about some of the global economic and geopolitical impacts that open source has had. On the global front, today's innovation economy rests on a global supply chain of open source components. It is truly a global phenomenon with supply side participants from everywhere around the globe and consumption and value add occurring in every geographic region and economic sector imaginable. Most software and cyber physical systems uh, that ship today are 80 to 90% comprised of open source software. And that allows developers to focus on the 10 or 20% of the system that implements the differentiating value that their customers or their users actually care about. In business terms, this saves costs, reduces, reduces time to market, and mitigates risk by reusing well-known building blocks. As an aside, um, the ubiquity of open source is why talking about open source security issues is a completely wrong way to frame the discussion about the important software security issues that we all face, um, whether, uh, what, whether you're in government, um, industry, um, research, or academia. Since open source is contained in almost everything, including closed source proprietary products, security needs to be framed as an industry-wide problem rather than pointing fingers at open source. 
With respect to the economy, it's hard to understate the importance of open source to the economy. Not only does it reduce development costs and time to market, it's the engine that's driving economic growth. And if you look at over the last 15 years, the greatest amount of value creation that's happened in the economy has come from companies who have succeeded in the platform economy. And the platform economy, of course, rests on this the freely available internet uh, that was brought to us by Vince Cerf and Tim Berners-Lee. But each of these companies, um, you know, we're talking the Googles, the Facebooks, um, Amazon, Apple, and so on, uh, Alibaba, Huawei, their business models rely on the available uh, uh, the availability of free software, largely because of the scale enabled by it. Neither uh, Amazon nor Google, uh, their business models are based on extremely highly scalable data centers. Um, and if they couldn't, they simply, their business models simply would not work if they were paying for all of the software, including the operating systems and networking systems that ran them. Um, all of these companies also have sophisticated interactions with the open source community. And let's be honest, they use that to further their businesses. Um, you know, Google and Android is often used as the canonical example of this, but there is also Apple and WebKit, uh, Microsoft and GitHub, and the list goes on and on and on. So what we've observed is over the last, you know, 10, 15 years, the most valuable companies in the world have mastered the art of creating value from open source. And the economic impact has been massive, and it's only going to continue to accelerate in the future. Turning now to geopolitics, open source is being noticed by poly policymakers around the world because they are largely because they're recognizing the economic importance. And just a couple of examples of this in the U.S. Uh, last year, there was an executive order which identified software bill of materials and or s bombs and open source as key elements in addressing security. More recently, there was a meeting at the White House with the open source community and business leaders to discuss supply chain security. From China recently, um, they, they announced their five-year plan for digitalization, um, which mentions open source 16 times. And amongst other things, sets a specific goal to have at least three major open source technologies originating from China within five years. And secondly, and I think you know, even perhaps more interesting, specifically calls for Chinese organizations to join and participate in international open source foundations. So you're seeing open source being recognized as an economic um, driver of the innovation economy um, around the world, and it's getting the attention of policymakers and political decision makers around the world. Now, one of the major changes that the impact of open source is, uh, is having is that it's move, moved from you know, the kinds of things I was talking about earlier in terms of uh, the, the cost side of the equation, reducing costs, reducing time to market, mitigating risk, um, and it's be now becoming the mechanism that drives innovation forward. And if you look at what I consider to be uh, the five mega trends in the innovation economy today, um, open source is being used strategically to advance these technologies. So open source has now moved from a way to sort of commoditize existing technology to a mechanism, a strategic mechanism to advance new technologies and the adoption of new technologies um, in, uh, around the world. So if you look at the five major trends, there's you know IoT and edge, uh, machine learning and AI, uh, cloud, and of course Kubernetes has made a, a, a huge impact on the cloud world, largely by making it safe um, for widespread adoption um, by enterprises by enabling both multi-cloud and hybrid cloud. So this allowed enterprises to engage without the fear of lock-in to a single cloud better, uh, vendor. Distributed ledger technologies is almost entirely based on, on open source software stack, um, and, um, and that technology is advancing rapidly. I, the one sort of mega trend that, I've, uh, that I see out there right now that really um, hasn't embraced open source as a strategic element of advancing the technology is, industry, is honestly is industry 4.0, and certainly we at the Eclipse Foundation are doing everything we can um, to, uh, to change that and, and make open source a, a key part of that strategy. We do see that these three, these five trends are going to come together to form the next massive uh, opportunity for the economy, for the economy, um, so what we've called the, or I've seen called the machine economy. Um, and this is going to create an opportunity for the next uh, set of massive companies um, that are going to be driving forward 
um, the machine economy. And it's going to be very interesting to see um, how Europe fares in the next generation of, of rapid innovation um, and, and adoption. So in closing, I'd like to share some thoughts that I have um, on the open source agenda. Um, and um, open source agenda for European policymakers, um, you know, some thoughts on what this could look like. The first is engage the community. Um, there's uh, um, a tendency amongst uh, in governments uh, and, and in, in other sectors that when you want to have an impact on something uh, new and interesting or something that's new and interesting to you is, is immediately go out and, and create new institutions um, to, uh, to, to direct or influence um, what's going on. And frankly, uh, there are already a lot of um, open source institutions within, um, within Europe, uh, but also you know, worldwide. And so I think engaging the community and supporting the community as it exists today um, is, uh, is a far better strategy. Another, another thought is uh, we've seen, I've observed over the last couple of years, a, a distressing tendency to uh, create sort of new special purpose uh, open source foundations in areas like logistics um, and others. And I, I think that's actually an anti-pattern. Uh, I think that creating siloed open source foundations is actually not uh, the best way to go forward. I think, again, sort of back to engaging with the community um, there's a lot of uh, success that's been had in broadly based organizations that have a general model of how open source is going to be done. Um, you know, organizations and communities like Debian and the Apache Software Foundation, the Linux Kernel, uh, of course, the Eclipse Foundation. You know, we've been doing this for a long time, and it's it's quite actually very difficult to recreate. Um, the sense of community uh, that you get um, from from those uh, those types of communities and organizations. Now, when it comes to open source and open standards, uh, I feel that today's in today's world, innovation is being driven far more by open source than by standards. But the combination of a robust a robust open source implementation with a standard is clearly the best practice uh, for to get rapid adoption of new technologies. From a business perspective, the value propositions of open source are innovation, rapid adoption, and flexibility, whereas the value propositions for open standards are different, things like stability, interoperability, and investment protection. So ultimately, these are we see these as being two sides of the innovation coin. The challenge, I think, right now is for policymakers to put open source on an equal footing with open standards. Europe has a long and proud tradition in leading in international standards. However, that is no longer sufficient for today's innovation economy. The phrase dis digital sovereignty has a lot of different interpretations, and, but for me, ultimately, it's about freedom of action. Europe needs to put in some policies and infrastructure to uh, play in place to protect and preserve the global supply chain that it relies upon for its innovation economy. Now, to be clear, I reject the notion that digital sovereignty implies Europe should reinvent technologies which have already been done well elsewhere. Progress is made by standing on the shoulders of giants, not by reinventing the wheel. Ideas that I think could be considered by policymakers include supporting source code and artifact repositories to ensure, ensure supply chain continuity within Europe um, for all the key open source technologies, languages, and platforms. Uh, support open source community efforts to improve security and supply chain security. The current system of simply demanding more from open source developers is broken. We collectively need to help them with services and infrastructure, not more demands. Encouraging industry players um, to engage with and support open source communities and foundations uh, to move past the, the current model of thanks for all the free stuff uh, without contributing back to its sustainability. Um, I think that's, uh, that's uh, something that would really help a lot. So it's clear that policymakers around the world have realized the importance of open source to their innovation economies. Frankly, Europe is behind on this topic and in some ways even appears to be misdirecting its energies to open standards to the detriment of open source. I think that would be a disaster for future innovation in Europe. As I've argued earlier, these two need to be put on a level playing field. 
However, the elements for future leadership and success are there. Europe has always had a major pres presence in the free software and open source communities. So there is deep knowledge and passionate people here. Organizations such as Open Forum Europe, Free Software Foundation Europe, Software Heritage, and the Eclipse Foundation have global reach and reputations. Collaborating with those institutions will pay off quickly. The opportunity is for policymakers to fully engage with open source and make it one of the pillars of the innovation agenda to ensure the future wealth and prosperity of European societies. I strongly believe that leadership is within our grasp if we make it a priority uh, and make open source at the center of the intervention agenda. Thank you.